When discussing orthogonal functions, it's very important to specify the interval on which the functions are defined, because that can change whether or not they are orthogonal. So we always talk about being orthogonal with respect to or on a particular interval. So if we're on a symmetric interval, so I mean symmetric around 0, so it goes from minus L to L, and we'll take L to be equal to pi just to keep the numbers sort of simple. Um, then let's look at this family T, script T here. So it consists of the constant function 1, and then also cosine x, cosine 2x, cosine 3x, and in general cosine nx, where n is an integer, and also the functions sine x and sine 2x and sine 3x, so forth. This family forms an orthogonal set of functions on the symmetric interval minus pi to pi. Okay, so, and in fact, not just are they orthogonal, but if we define the inner product between uh, two functions to be 1 over pi times the integral from uh, minus pi to pi fx gx dx, then it turns out that they form an orthonormal system And uh, even more is true, they are in fact a complete system, meaning that they form a basis. So script T is an orthonormal basis. And as a basis for the vector space L2 minus pi to pi. And what that means is that if I take uh, an L2 function um, <coughs> uh, it means that F is approximated by its Fourier series Or in other words, the Fourier series of f converges to f. So we now understand the, the meaning of this symbol here with the tilde. This means that the Fourier series of f converges to f. And the Fourier series for f is just exactly this guy right here. Okay, so, oh, and I, I guess I should, I should just be super clear and specify. So, a n is 1 over pi integral minus pi to pi f of x cosine n x, and b n is 1 over pi integral minus pi to pi f x sine n x dx. So those are the Fourier coefficients. OK, this is all on the symmetric interval from minus pi to pi. If we now look at the asymmetric interval from 0 to pi, uh, then we find out that this uh, is no longer quite the same. So T, for instance, the same set before, is not an orthogonal set on this asymmetric interval from 0 to pi. Um, <coughs> and in fact, if you look at the inner product between cosine nx and sine nx, you find out that this is actually equal to 1 with this inner product as we've defined it, uh, except with the domain of integration changed from 0 to pi. But if we look at, let's take the set C to be the collection 1 cosine x 
cosine 2x, cosine 3x, etc. This set here, this is orthogonal by itself now. On 0 to pi and that shouldn't be too surprising because the subset of an orthogonal set should still be an orthogonal set right if you have 10 things and they're all orthogonal to each other and you pull the first three out well they're still orthogonal to each other right and so that would work even if we restrict to a smaller domain um, and so is if we take the set s This is also orthogonal on the set 0 to pi. By the way, I'm using s for sines, c for cosines, and t for trigonometric, um, just, just to keep that straight. Um, and so then it turns out that there's corresponding theorem that c is an orthonormal basis for L2 of the um, asymmetric interval. And we also have that S is an orthonormal basis for L2 of the asymmetric interval. Now, neither of those by itself is enough to form a basis of um, uh, on on the interval from minus pi to pi. Um, turns out there's just certain things that you can't do. And the reason for that is because everything that you can build in C, uh, if you look at it on the interval from minus pi to pi, it'll be an even function. So it's going to be orthogonal to any odd function, and you can't build it. Similarly, anything that you build entirely with functions from S uh, if you're trying to approximate something on the interval from minus pi to pi that's an even function, uh, you'll fail because every single element of S is orthogonal to an even function. So that's not going to work. So, <coughs> um, so let's see. So this theorem says that the cosines give us an orthonormal basis for L2 of the asymmetric. What does that mean? That means that if we choose something uh, from L2 0 pi, then it will be approximated by um, <coughs> these series. Oh, actually, you know what? In order for the normalization to work out right, I just realized instead of 1, I should use 1 half as the basis for the constant. Sorry about that. Um, so f will be approximated by a n cosine n x where now the ANs are slightly different because the ANs are computed only over the interval from 0 to pi. And that means that their normalization factor is slightly different as well with a 2 in the uh, numerator. Maybe I'll just make it blue so it stands out a little bit more. Um, <coughs> and so this, this then is called the Fourier cosine series for f. So that's one way that we can write f. But we can also express f in terms of sines. So it'll turn out that f uh, can also be written as a sum of bn sine nx. And this would be the Fourier sine series for f on the interval from 0 to pi. And here, bn is going to be the uh, similarly renormalized um, integral from 0 to pi fx sine nx dx. OK, so you use either the cosines or the sines to represent f, but not both. 
So then you immediately have the question, uh, when do you use the Fourier cosine series uh, and when do you use the Fourier sine series? If you can do either. Well, the answer to this question is that um, we will use the, uh, Fourier's ma Fourier methods when we are constructing an initial condition. Uh, right, so f will come to us as the initial condition in an IBVP, initial boundary value problem. And so it will actually be the uh, boundary conditions the boundary conditions will determine which to use. 